Jimmy from Lasers Lab here, and today we're going to do a fun one. We're going to be animating some handwriting. This will be a two-parter. The first part will be kind of like a simple version, uh, and then we're going to follow up with some extra steps that can push it into a realistic territory. Let's do it. So, got After Effects open here. I'm going to start by importing my sketch. I did a little drawing in Procreate. Um, it does help if you have a um, little experience with drawing, but it's not a necessity here. Um, I'm going to make a new composition, call it handwriting, and I'm going to go with my default here, which is 1080, uh, 24 frames per second, and 24 seconds long. So, uh, Or actually, I should say 10 seconds long. <laughs> Whoops. All right, here we go. And uh, to start, I'm gonna drag my sketch into that composition and resize. I don't need to take up the whole thing, but I'm gonna get pretty close and just kind of rotate it until we're looking good. Then I will lock the layer and create a new layer and name this handwriting. So pretty much all of this is going to be done with the pen tool. If you're not well versed with the pen tool, uh, it can take a little getting used to, but that comes with the territory. Uh, practice makes perfect. Basically you want to find a thickness that works well. I have done this already, so it's probably going to be about where I want it. Um, and it is, yeah. Uh, but you can go ahead and adjust the stroke width up here. My general rule of thumb is to use a, a thickness about as thick as the thickest part of your line. Felt like uh, about 10 minutes of my life, I'll never get back. This looks done, so I can now go through and select points if I just want to smooth them out here and there. I'm not going to get too crazy with this, but um, I will do a little bit just to kind of make the flow look a little more natural. That done, we're going to open everything up. I got 17 layers, so I'm just going to rename all of them, which seems like a pain. That's fairly quick, and uh, it's a very good practice to get into. I should do it more often, but uh, I don't. Normally, you'd have to go into every single layer now in order to switch the ends here to a, a round cap. Um, let's see, so you can see here, butt cap versus round cap. For a handwriting, you definitely want it to be a round cap. and you also definitely want it to be a round join. So that can be fairly tedious when you have 17 layers, which we do here. So what I have is a really awesome plugin. It's pay what you want uh, from the brilliant minds over at Battleaxe. I'm gonna link that in the description below. Uh, definitely go grab that. Um, I'm gonna open it up here in window. And it's just this little interface and it gives you an option to change the caps on your lines so you don't have to go into every layer individually. What you do is you just press the button and bam! All round caps. And alt click it to turn all the corners into round corners. Thank you guys for that one. And close that up. And now I'm going to go up here, select the layer, and add trim paths. But before we even utilize that, I have to go and select every layer again and do another thing here. You have to go through and switch the direction of the lines. I'm not actually sure if that's a, you definitely have to do that, but this is part of my process. Now that everything's been reversed here, I'm gonna go down to my trim paths effect and I'm going to bring the start all the way up to 100. And I'm going to go down to the Trim Multiple Shapes layer, and I'm going to switch that to Individually. And now what you'll notice is if you um, decrease the percentage of the start level, 
it's going to write everything out. Amazing. So starting at 100, I'm going to do a keyframe to start and I'm going to jump ahead 100 frames and add a zero keyframe. And now we can kind of scroll between. Before I do that, I want to just add some easing on these. So right click, I go easy ease in on the final frame and easy ease out on this first one. Now I can open the graph editor and you can use the handles here to just kind of manipulate it to get a little bit more easing or less depending. And I normally I would probably add more keyframes through here, but just for demonstrative purposes, we're just going to have the beginning and the end. So when you play through this animation, smooth as butter. All right, and that ends our first section, which is the simple handwriting. Um, as you can see, it's like a mono line. It's sort of mechanical looking. It definitely is nice um, and it's definitely usable in many circumstances, but we want to really up the ante here. So um, before we move on, I just want to thank you for watching and let you know if you find this content useful, consider liking and subscribing. It really helps the channel out. Anyway, uh, back to it. Uh, now with this layer all set up, the handwriting layer, I'm going to control D, duplicate it. I can close the graph editor. I'm going to get a little bit thicker. I'm going to decrease the opacity down to about 50%. Okay, that looks good. Going into the contents, I actually want to turn off this trim paths and I want to pick whip it to the trim paths below. So from start to start here. And then that creates a little expression here. And I just want to add a value at time expression. So that would be lowercase value, capital A T, capital T time. Parentheses, time minus, this is 24 frames per second here. So uh, I'm gonna try two frames divided by 24 seconds. And what you're gonna see here is that it's gonna run a little bit behind the timing of the first layer, that's all. And that's gonna create like our little ink bleed as the ink soaks, soaks into the paper a little bit. This will make a little more sense when we add a couple more effects, but uh, that looks good. So I'm going to select that layer and add another turbulent displace to it. Or actually, I'm just going to crank up the displace that's on it a bit. Yeah. Make it a little more irregular. That's good. Now we get to the fun part. I'm going to go up to layer new, add an adjustment layer. And on this layer, I'm going to add an effect and distort liquify. Uh, this is great. So that I have this liquify layer on, what I can do is just scroll to the end here. And what I'm going to do is reshape everything so that it looks a little more hand drawn. And the way that I'm going to do that is using this tool here, the pucker brush. And to resize this, all you need to do is hold the control button down as you drag holding the left mouse cursor and that will shrink it a little bit. So I just want to go to the areas where it would normally be a little bit thinner and I just want to thin them out. You can go up and adjust the pressure if you want it to be a little bit more strong. And of course, oops, you can move across the screen by holding the space bar. We're going to follow with a Gaussian blur. I'll go up to like a, maybe a six should be good. 
follow that with another turbulent displace. And I'm just going to click off my bottom layer there and go to the checkup board here. I'm going to reduce that size down to two. Also reduce the amount a little bit. And then the matte choker. Love this effect. And you can see here the messing with the soft the geometric softness and the choke, the overall choke will result in you know, sharpening up of those lines. Pretty cool. And there, I mean, it doesn't look like a vector thing at all anymore. It really looks like a nice hand-drawn lettering. What I'm going to do is go into my project menu here. I have my handwriting section. I'm going to right-click New Comp from Selection. So it just creates a new one with this layer flattened down. And I'll actually bring this down to 100 because that's basically how far we're going to go. So. Control D, duplicate this layer. And now, for the layer underneath, what I'm gonna do, this is a fun, easy little trick. This one, forward, three frames. It's the poor man's time delay. And so for this bottom one, this will be the ink bleed. We're going to lock the top layer. On this layer, we will add another liquify effect. And this time we're going to use bloat. And essentially, wherever we want the ink to be bleeding out, which I'm going to be selecting areas where there's, you know, concentrations of black, we're going to see a really cool effect. So I'm going to lower the opacity here down to about 50. And I can go through and wow, amazing. Wow! Now I'm going to go ahead and import one of my paper textures. Uh, I have another tutorial out there how to use the free software Blender to create paper textures, which I made this one with. Um, I can drop it underneath there. I can control and basically throw both of these in another pre-comp. And, and then I can lower the opacity. Get a little bit of that underneath composition coming through. And for good measure, I'm going to also drop in Cool little ink splatter. Got another tutorial coming um, where I make this guy completely procedurally. I'll link that in the description when it's out. Um, find a good place for it, maybe in one of the dots of the eyes. All right, and I'm just going to export this.